Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The United States has proposed a draft resolution at the UN Security Council which calls for a temporary ceasefire in Gaza. It has also warned Israel against invading the overcrowded city of Rafa. The US has previously avoided the word ceasefire during UN votes on the war, but President Joe Biden has made similar comments. More than a million displaced Palestinians, who represent about half of Gaza's population, are crammed into Rafa after being forced to seek shelter there. The southern city, which borders Egypt, was home to only 250,000 people before the war. Meanwhile, Benjamin Netanyahu says the international community cannot impose a two-state solution once the war ends. Israel categorically rejects international edicts on a permanent arrangement with the Palestinians. Such an arrangement will be achieved only through direct negotiations between the sides without preconditions. The crew of a Belize-flagged British-registered cargo vessel have abandoned ship off Yemen after it was hit by missiles fired by the Houthi movement. The Ruby Mar was in the Gulf of Aden when it was hit and the crew abandoned ship. The Houthis later claimed it had sunk. It is one of the most damaging attacks so far by the Iran-backed Houthis. They have launched dozens of missiles and drones at merchant vessels and Western warships since mid-November. The family of Alexei Navalny, the Putin critic who died in a Russian prison, have reportedly been told his body will not be released for two weeks. His mother was informed it was being held for chemical analysis. There has been no confirmation of the whereabouts of the body from Russian authorities, while efforts to locate it have been repeatedly shut down. The wife of the late Russian opposition leader has accused them of hiding it. In a video on Monday vowing to continue his work to fight for a free Russia, Yulia Navalny directly accused Russian President Vladimir Putin of killing her husband. She also alleged his body was being kept until traces of poisoning by the nerve agent Novichok had disappeared. The body of a man who was shot dead in Spain is believed to be that of a Russian helicopter pilot who defected to Ukraine last year. In August, Maxim Kuzminov flew a helicopter into Russian territory where he handed himself in. Spanish police have not publicly confirmed the identity of the man who was killed near Alicante last week. However, Ukrainian intelligence confirmed Mr. Kuzminov's death. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has begun a two-day hearing in what could be his final bid to appeal his extradition from the UK to the United States. He has been in a UK prison since 2019 and is wanted by the US for leaking secret military files in 2010 and 2011. In 2021, the UK High Court ruled that he should be extradited, dismissing claims that his poor mental health meant he might take his own life in a US jail. He says the case against him is politically motivated and his lawyers have suggested they will take the case to the European Court of Human Rights if the appeal is turned down. Outside court, his wife said Mr Assange's case is an attack on all journalists. This case is an admission by the United States that they now criminalize investigative journalism. It's an attack on all journalists all over the world. It's an attack on the truth, and it's an attack on the public's right to know. Julian is a political prisoner, and his life is at risk. What happened to Navalny can happen to Julian. He has to be released. Guinea's military junta, which seized power in a coup in September 2021, has dissolved the government. The announcement was made through a presidential decree read on state TV by the president's secretary general, Brigadier General Amara Kamara. Mr. Kamara did not disclose the reason for the dissolution or say when a new government will be put in place. And X, formerly known as Twitter, has finally paid off the staff it sacked in its African headquarters more than a year after they were laid off. Most had only been in the job, based in Ghana's capital Accra, for a few months, when the social media platform fired them in November 2022. They had threatened to take X to court for failing to pay the redundancy money they said they were promised. The company has not commented. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos.